baseball's a hot and cold game, and uh, we're kind of lukewarm right now, I would say. So, um, you know, we had two good games against the Brewers. We had a good game last night, and we got a good team in the Red Sox coming in tomorrow. So uh, we just got to come out and play our game and hopefully get hot. I think everyone, you know, always thinks that they can do better, and we always fight for perfectionists. But like I said, this game's tough, and, um, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, and um, it's just wait for the ups to come. They'll be here, and uh, we'll just keep fighting. The strikeouts continue to pile up at an alarming rate. The Twins lead the major leagues in whiffs. They've gone down 742 times this season. So if you do the math, stretch it out over the entire season, the Twins would set the major league record for strikeouts, well over 1,600. The record in a single season was the 2021 Chicago Cubs. But Twins great, now TV analyst Justin Morneau, says despite these dismal numbers, Numbers, the Twins are still a first place team and have a chance to make this a memorable year. You can't really control what division you play in as long as you're the best team in your division. That's how it is. I mean, it, they pitched well enough to be in first place. So the offense is the part that's been really holding them back from, from going on a run and being, you know, 10 or 12 games over. But this is a, it's a good baseball team that is, is figuring out the new style, you know, starting to run more. We've seen that a lot since uh, the calendar turned from April to May. But there's, there's re reason for optimism with this team, I think. There's, there's something there that you believe this team is good. I mean, the depth in the starting pitching, you've got you know, high-end guys at the front of the rotation. You've got Duran, one of the most dominant relievers in all the game of baseball. So there's a lot there that I think you can believe in this team. You look at how they've gotten to this point. This is complete opposite of what we've seen the past few years. There hasn't been the pitching, and now all of a sudden the rotation is lights out and the hitting isn't there. I mean, this is something, you know, this was the Bomba squad a couple years ago, and now they can't put together hardly any rallies. Yeah, I, I, how, how frustrating is that, you think, to them? and going through the, the struggles they have offensively. I mean, everyone's trying to figure out exactly the best approach, the best way to go about it. And I think it's been a struggle offensively. You said it, I mean, they set the all-time home run record not long ago. And obviously not many of those guys are left now on this team that were a part of that team. But it, it's a game that still is relying on the home run ball. It's a, it's a game that's relying on, you know, winning games by being able to hit a three-run homer. And I think the challenge for this year has been those games where you haven't been able to hit the three round homer of being able to score in different ways. And I think I'm not usually overly concerned with strikeouts. It's part of the game and it's part of hitting home runs. It's part of driving the ball. But I think the strikeouts have, have been really the cause of why it's been so difficult to string these innings together where they've been able to score runs. And I think when the ball is in the catcher's glove, you have no chance of getting a hit. And I think that's been the challenge with this team is, yeah, they've hit enough home runs to win. They've, they've driven the ball around the ballpark. You know, the slugging percentage as a group has been good. They've been barreling the ball up. It's just, you know, what are you doing in those at-bats when you're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark? And I think that's where the challenge has been. All right. I'm assuming you did not enjoy striking out. It seems like now it doesn't have that stigma that it once had. Do you think that's part of what we're seeing here? Well, I think it's, I mean, the way guys are being taught and the way they're being coached and the way, you know, you want to get as many good swings at, at the ball as you can. But I also think we have to realize that the pitcher pitching is better too. You know, it's just part of the game. I mean, you're facing relievers now that were closers 10 or 15 years ago and they're pitching in the sixth inning. I mean, we're seeing velocity that you know, there was there was 10 or 15 guys across the game that have it. And now every bullpen has three guys with it. So it's just that much more difficult. You're not getting as many looks at the starting pitcher. I mean, it, it's so much more challenging. The strike zone is, I'd say, probably double the size of what it was when I played. And that wasn't that long ago. I mean, the pitch between, you know, the belt and, and the letters is really now a strike. And, and if it was called when we were playing, you're barking at the umpire out of the dugout. I mean, there was a lot that was going on. So I think... I think more than anything, pitchers will figure, or hitters will figure out how to hit velocity. But to me, it is, it's the strike zone 100%. The low pitch at the knees, the top of the zone, the strike zone is, is, is massive compared to what it used to be. And I think that is the biggest reason why it's so much harder to hit today. This is your new home. 
I mean, you got everything right in front of you here. Uh, how has this been? Do you like it? You're obviously here a lot. Yeah, I, I enjoy <laughs> it. You know, coming to the ballpark and, and you know, getting to meet around the game, getting to talk to the guys, getting to spend some time in the clubhouse, getting, you know, getting to do, you know, what I've always loved to do is, is a positive and then not having the, the full commitment of, of being a part of a coaching staff or doing something where I'm spending a lot of time on the road. So it's a good balance of, of being around, but then still being home enough and, and being able to, to see my kids and being able to be a part of what they're doing. Obviously, you'd like to be able to do both as much as you can, but this is the right balance for right now. And, and I love the game of baseball, and I'm, I'm just lucky that I get to be a part of this side of it and, and then still get to be a dad. What's been the toughest part of this? Uh, criticizing players when you know you've lived it and been in those situations? Or is it easier for you to walk the viewers kind of off the ledge because you know just how difficult that situation was that player X was in? I think the first thing I told myself when I came up here is never forget how hard the game is. I think that's something that happens as a player. The more you watch, the further you get away from it, the easier everything seems. And then you go down there and you remember how hard guys are working, you look at them. And then, and I think anyone can be critical, anyone can point out the mistake that just happened, but I think people already know that. I think the part I enjoy is trying to figure out the why and trying to explain what just happened. Why, did, yeah, he, he missed that ball, but what led to the mistake? Was it, was it the footwork? Was it you know something that went wrong before the error or the mistake actually happened? And then trying to help people understand that you know what happens I mean we see it I see it all the time watching kids games I mean parents are yelling at a, a 10 year old for dropping a fly ball and going have you watched a big league game there's guys that'll drop fly balls there too so you know I think it's hard at the youth level it's hard at the big league level and I think one of the most important parts of being up here is, is never forgetting that happy father's day happy father's day